Hi everyone, uh, we are here on day four. So we will go through the five questions for SQL certification exam 1C0071, SQL certified SQL associate exam. So we are trying to uh, do five questions a day, a type of questions, sample questions, which are asked on the exam. We are trying to understand uh, how they ask the questions on exam and how we can solve them uh, faster and in the most right way. Because on exam, we don't have any uh, place where we can try the, like use any of our SQL developer or Apex or live SQL to try out those queries. We don't have any environment. Also, we just get like a small notepad kind of a place where we can, uh, if you want to note down anything temporary, you can do that. It is a proctor managed exam because of which like you have somebody watching you. And also when you give the exam, you cannot have papers or phone or multiple monitors around you because when you actually go for the exam, you need to give the pictures of your surroundings. Like they ask you to give the picture of the left, right, and both the sides so with that in mind uh, like uh, we just need to train our eyes and our logic to get this exam out of the way so let's just uh, start with uh, today's five questions uh, some of these questions are uh, on uh, group by so as all of you know that we have a couple of group by functions which we use regularly like uh, min, max, sum, average, count, and the standard deviation, and another. So these are the functions. So some of these functions, they apply only on numeric. So sum is always on numeric, standard deviation always on numeric. Min and max can be on A, B, C, D, like alphanumeric or numeric. Uh, so average is also on numeric. So you just need to understand that. Also, uh, whenever you use a group function in the select statement, the output is always the one row, one column, like an Excel sheet, like Excel sheet has the column and row. So one cell of the Excel, uh, that's what the output we would get. Okay. So if you want a multiple rows output, or you want to actually do like department wise or job wise, those kind of sum totals, average or any other calculation, if you want to do the clause, which we use it group by. So with the group by clause, uh, one thing you need to remember if you, whatever the columns or whatever the expression, expression means like suppose you are using some other function, which is not a group function in the select statement, you're using department ID, you're using uh, any of the other function, like suppose upper, lower or something like that in uh, with the employee name or last name or first name, any of those columns, you need to get those in the group by. Otherwise, the statement will not work. So whatever you have in the first select, except those group functions, you exactly just copy paste and get it down. Okay. You cannot group by using the column position. Okay. So you, you don't use the position or alias. You actually use that column over there, like or whatever the expression is there, you can use it. Can you use the where clause when you're using group by? Yes, you can always use the where clause and the recommendation and the way the sequence should be. Your select statement, then the from, then the where clause, whatever the where clause you have. After that, you have the group by and the group by follows having. So there is a lot of confusion and like a lot of time you also think that where to use group by and where, sorry, where to use where and where to use having. So whenever you want to filter, whenever you want to put some condition on the group function, which is min, max, average, sum, those kind of functions, then you use the having clause. And having clause comes always after group by clause. And the where condition is on the table columns, like employee name or last name, first name, department number. So the, for those of the columns, we use the where clause. So some of this just uh, try to, um, 
like keep in your mind when you are looking at a group by related exam topic question. I have listed Kamala, some of the pointers at the bottom, which you will see that try to go through those and let's just go through the five questions for today. And I'm going to share my screen. Just give me a second. Yes. So we are here again back for preparation of your SQL certification bootcamp and the certification we are going for is Oracle Database Certified SQL Associate credential we are going for and this is the badge which we will get. So let's just go through like today's questions. So the first question as you see is the question which is asking uh, which query is a valid query okay so in this case what happens we have to look for any syntax syntax mistake in any of the queries which are getting listed so look at just first thing i would look at the column names so usually they don't trick you with the column names and even they trick you you should like one time just confirm like the column names are right like uh, emp underscore id EMP underscore name, DPT underscore, right? See, they are missing here the underscore. So it should be department ID, salary, and the job date, okay? So which query is valid? So over here, the depart select department ID, and then join date, sum of salary from employees group by department ID, join date. So this department ID and join date is copy pasted over here. So the first query itself looks exactly right, okay? So let's just go and see why the other queries are not right. So in the second example, you see department ID max average salary, uh, max and average salary from employees group by this. So combining the multiple group functions like this until and unless you are not putting uh, uh, the second, see the way the you would, if you want this kind of a query, you don't need to write the grouping because if you, you don't need to write the group by department ID on the, uh, uh, you don't need to select it because you are, you want to do a nested group function. So in those cases, you just do group by. So you just get one row output, okay? So otherwise it's an error. So to explain this, actually the option number B and D, they're almost similar. Like it is nesting of the group functions and that doesn't work exactly the way given over here. You will get an error called as not a single group function. So I have made a small modification to the query and instead of department ID and instead of uh, employees, the table name is quite right, but the department ID, which we have it in the HR schema. So if you actually copy paste this query, this segment over here, this one in your Apex or SQL developer or live SQL, this whole thing. So this is the one which will give you error just to see like if the error is coming. This is the fix for it. And this is the alternate way to do it. Okay, so for the same query. So just to show like uh, how you would fix, a, it is not part of the exam. They're not expecting you to write this and all. I just want you to understand that how this nesting of the group function can create an error. Because when you look at it, it looks right. Okay, when you look at it, it has the department ID here, department ID there, only the change is the nesting of the group function. And with that, what change happens? So to check it practically, I have just given you this few SQL to try, okay? But the answer A is the right answer, straightforward answer. So now the second question is, again, we have a description of the table and it is saying execute the query. The query is given, why does an error occur? So what is, wh why there is an error, okay? Why there is an error? So if you look at the query, so, and this is group by and order by is there. So you have a department number, alias is department, average salary, alias is there, max salary, alias is there. So the first option is well, the alias name must be always be specified in the quotes. So not necessary. If you don't have a space, you don't need to use the quotes. If you don't want to reserve the case of the alias, you don't need to use the quote. You use the quote only in case if you want to 
have exactly the same case or you have some spaces then you use double quotes for the alias so answer one is eliminated alias must not contain the space it can contain the space just put uh, quotes around space is okay alias must not be used in the group by class so this is a kind of a rule which we which we need to remember and just see the next answer the alias name must not be used in the order by class you know that we use alias name in order by class so answer number c that will cause the error because when you write a group by class you cannot write a column position or column alias when you are using group by in order by clause both the things are allowed but in group by it is not allowed so if you see that that's the answer you would select okay the next is the basic question on entity relationship model or diagram it's just asking what are the three components of the entity relationship just remember this relationship attribute entity because there is activity unique identifier and table these are not part of the er diagram entity relationship diagram so just remember these other three like the relationships which we do attribute is that column name and the entity is the table name actually so but in the er diagram we call them by this names the next one is again a description of the table which statement will execute successfully sometimes they are asking which statement will be error sometimes they are asking which statement will be successful okay so uh, over here we'll just go again when you look at it it's going to be your group by topic you can immediately see that because all of them they have some kind of group by here okay so the department id standard deviation this 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 group by department id so over here the first thing which is little bit like you can think of it wrong is last name is a uh, alphabetic and then on that you cannot apply the standard deviation which is always applied on the numeric so this is like rejected the second one is the department id max on the last name sum on the salary second one actually looks okay but let's just go through the third and fourth option uh, select department id length last name sum of salary from employees group by so whenever you use this is length is a other function it's a single row function but not the group function so when it is used you have to use that expression or the column in the group by because department id is the one column the second column is this last name the last name length or the last name has to be used in the group by because that's the rule whatever you use here but they are trying to confuse you here because they are using length and they are using sum min max so we have to be very clear on which are the group functions anything other than group function is not group function so if you are using them and with that you are using any other column that has to be listed on the group by clause so the third one c is wrong and for you i have written this you can try this the fix for the c how it can be changed you can just get the whole function also and put it here it's fine so that also can work it just for your trial this try uh, that's for the c okay the option c fix and it's not expected again just for you to visualize it why it is not working and what error it will give okay so you can try that and the last one is department id in string this sum salary this group by again the similar error which is with c uh, you are using a in string which is the other function with other column but that column is not listed on the group by it's going to give you error the answer is b okay so but to make it clear you can always use this part here and you will come to know what i'm saying so the last question for today is examine the table so now if you see if you see the change in the question answers the question now most of this question it's giving us the table description then it is giving us the query or to find out an error or something but most of these today's question they have a table description so when we look at the table description your eye should be very much comfortable with it it's a table name 
then the column names, then the data types, and that null, not null is for if it's a primary key, it will be not null. If it's not, then it will be like null. But for primary key, it will show not null and all, but we don't need to worry about it until that topic is not the objective which we are looking at. So when we look at this, this looks like, like okay, it has a group by and having means it's a group by. So we, whatever the rules I have written over here, like uh, the error, the single group function error explanation is here and couple of rules, like the way we want to just summarize some rules I have written over here. So let's just see the last question, which is again, you have this um, table description. Uh, you execute the query. So now they have given the query to execute and then it's asking for the, what will be the result, okay? so. Uh, I just looked at the query, looking at the query, it is violating one of the root. So I know exactly what is the error. The answer is error because you cannot do group by column position. That itself is the error. I don't even need to read any other options at this point. So to save time, I would remember this. Uh, I would remember this rule, like the group by. This is you don't need to confuse it. There is a group by clause. There is an order by clause. So order by column position, order by alias name, and order by column name is allowed. Okay, but in group by, you cannot use the alias name or you cannot use the column position. You can use the column names the way exactly in the same order of the first the select statement. So. Error is the answer. And as I said, actually, if I'm giving the exam, I know I would know this rule and I will not even read the other answers, okay? But if you want to read it, like just read it like so that like you will go by rejection. But here it's direct hit, like it's a group by with one. Okay, so departments only, uh, so see, this answers right now even, uh, you will try to solve this in your mind and get the answer it is not going to help because the purpose of this to make you identify the group by cannot use column position so because of that whatever complex thing they'll give but the actual answer is the error over here so just go by that way i don't want to read the a c and d because there is no uh, it, they're not going to work anyway okay if it was some syntax or something but this is about results. So because of that, I'm not reading it. And if you want to try this with different options, I have given it here again. This is something for you to try. So go ahead and try this in your SQL developer, Apex or Live SQL. I have replaced the column which is compatible to the HR schema so that you don't need to make any changes. If you copy this query, it is not going to work, but if you copy the one which I'm giving you, it will work, okay? So with this, we have completed another five questions for day four, and now we are almost like around 20 questions. So we are good with 20 questions. We are practicing the 20 questions um, over and over, uh, and just looking in the angle that, uh, topic wise, like the exam objective wise, or remembering the rule, remembering the rejection criteria. So that way we cannot say if the same questions are going to be on the exam, we cannot guarantee that, but we can say that similar, like, you know, it's a practicing, getting used to the way Oracle exam ask you question. So getting used to that pattern. So that's the goal uh, of our preparation of, of our bootcamp. So with that, uh, I'm ending the session for today and see you guys next time. Thank you.